practical effects are cool, take three. Earlier this year, I was contacted by a really good director friend of mine to shoot another music video for the band Hachiku. We've worked with Hachiku a number of times in the past, all of the music videos that we've created together, Roxy and I, we've kind of maintained this handmade look to them. Lots of interesting production design, really strong director's vision, and it all just comes together really nicely with technical elements. This music video was no different, except we went all ham on the in-camera practical effects. For this video, I kind of wanted to show some behind the scenes about how director's vision, the technical aspects, and the production design can all work together to create something really interesting. Prior to the shoot, Roxy, Steph, the designer, and myself, got together and we kind of ran through the logistics of everything. This sort of meeting was kind of a production meeting plus a recce rolled into one. We did it all in the space. We had a look over the director's treatment, which was the first point of contact that was sent to me. If you're a director out there and you're wondering how best to get your vision and your idea across, best idea is to write a director's treatment. No matter what the project, you need to kind of do this step because it's really important to accurately convey what you're after. Otherwise you may not get what you want. If everybody else is on the same page and they understand what you're wanting as a director, and you've got this strong vision behind you with references, with a really strong director's treatment, uh, with a full layout of even camera and lighting ideas, it can be really helpful to everybody on set to kind of come together and make exactly what you want. Having the meeting in the space we were going to be working in was an absolutely fantastic idea. We were able to run through everything logistically, work out where light stands were going to go, where the camera was going to go, what exactly we needed. And having a production designer there, it made it even easier because we were able to bounce ideas off each other about what each other might need. I was able to take on board that she might need some more C stands. So we were able to hire some more C stands for the job just to be able to help her in her job. We were also able to take measurements of the room and work out the layout completely so that I was able to go and do the lighting plans and send them on to the gaffer. These are the lighting plans we kind of settled on. Now, I will say that these did change when we started shooting. We found that there were slight issues and hiccups that kind of got in the way. So we ended up having to adjust our lighting setups accordingly. But because we had the lighting plans already and we had a really strong vision about what we were wanting to achieve, it was easy enough to switch it up. That's why you plan. There was a very distinct background and a foreground, and we had slightly different lighting per room or scene. There were about three different setups, I guess, or three different rooms that we were going to be transitioning between. And having the setup kind of similar in all of them saved time in the end. Because it was a small crew, we had to really think about that quite hard, about how we wanted to set these up in the easiest and the best way possible to get what we wanted. And I think what we did here really worked. So we kept the back setup pretty much the same and then just turned off what we didn't need when we weren't using it. A big element of this particular music video is the pulsating and the flickering lights. So we had our Fresnels on dimmers and they're the ones that we kind of had to prioritize about where to put them. In addition to that, we had a couple of LED panels. Those ones, they could be dim but you had to be standing at the light to do it. So it really wasn't helpful to us with a small crew. We ended up using those as fill. So anywhere we needed just a solid light source or a little bit of ambience, we were able to use those. We maintained the separation between the foreground and the background. There was a lot of fabric hanging in the background and we were able to light through that and get this really cool like ambient red look. And red was a massive theme here. We made use of red gels as well. And I went out and I sourced this medium red. I believe it was a Roscoe gel filter. It was very dark. I took a punt on it and it worked, but it really did cut down the light source significantly. And that was one of the hurdles that we had. With our foreground light, which was one that either had to be rotating, pulsating, or even just flat onto Annika's face, we found that the gel was cutting way too much light. Kind of got to a point where I wasn't able to get a good enough exposure, so we kind of had to work out something different for our key light in our foreground. There were a couple of things we did here. We did use a panel at some stage to shine into the roof and that gave us a little bit more ambient light and was able to help somewhat. But then we also had to change that pulsating light or that rotating light itself and we ended up actually shooting it into a reflector. The reflector was on white side and there was a gel hanging in the middle of it. So the light was reflecting straight off the gel and the reflector, giving us more ambience as well as giving us this weird like ripply flickering effect, which kind of helped and looked really nice. As you can guess, the color red is a very big theme for this music video, and it was actually a very difficult hurdle to overcome during the shoot. I hadn't done a lot of tests on the Blackmagic Pocket 6K about the red spectrum and seeing how it handles it. 
it doesn't handle it very well. It's quite noisy. There were moments on set where I was incredibly concerned that the work was going to just all fall apart in post. So I think that's an important thing to remember if you are shooting with a single color spectrum, do a couple of tests with your camera beforehand. I didn't do it, I freaked out, but hey, in the grade, it was able to be cleaned up quite a lot and Robin did a fantastic job. I couldn't actually be there for the color grade, so I couldn't actually give too much input because of everything that's going on right now, but it was really, really well done and it looks really good. So we had the Blackmagic Pocket 6K, we had black Promus filters. I can't remember what strength they were. I think it was a half and a quarter. Lens-wise, it was the Sigma Art 18 to 35, as well as the 50 to 100. We had a small HD 702 for Roxy so she could check it out. We had our lights so we had a couple of Fresnels and a couple of LED panels. We had so many C-stands, that's actually one tip for you. If you're ever hiring C-stands and you think you only need three, get six. The white balance we set the camera to, I think it was 3200 Kelvin. That seemed to accurately represent the red gel pretty well. And the ISO was a mix of 400 and 3200. I tend to stay away from shooting in 3200, I don't like it. I do prefer the 400 image a lot better, it is much cleaner, but where I needed it, 3200 was go. And we also shot in 4K UHD, we didn't shoot in 6K, there was no need to, we didn't need it. Let's talk a little bit about the practical effects, because this music video was the most fun just for the sheer amount of in-camera practical effects that we did. Every single effect that you see here, every flare, everything, is done in camera, except for the transition at the end. Basically, it was all hands on deck, holding sheer fabrics, holding torches, holding prisms. Everything was going on in front of the camera. The front of the camera looked like a trash heap. It was great fun. At one point, we even used a projector and projected an image straight onto Annika. Now, the image that's on the projector is actually a handmade paper poppy that the production designer, Steph, had made. And we rotated the paper poppy above a shallow tray of water. So what we're capturing there is the reflection. Now, when you're lighting a reflection, you really need to think about how much light you have. You do need to have a significant amount of light. It may seem like you are overexposing something and in reality you are, but in the reflection you're not. You're losing a lot of that light. So that's kind of what we did. We had a torch really close up or we had a 650 Fresnel just off to the side so that there was enough light to capture that reflection. Now layering all of these in-camera effects allowed us to transition between these rooms or these scenes quite easily. I really like this idea about using in-camera practical effects to make something more interesting and it really does work with things that are highly conceptual. Now Roxy had a really solid idea about what she wanted and that really really helped in conveying that message across to Steph, the production designer, and to me for the technical stuff. And depending what sort of style you're going for, shooting through things or having these practical effects may May help you on your next project. Even if it's just something as simple as shooting through a window frame, shooting through a door frame, framing somebody using a tree, just think about things that you could put in the foreground to create a little bit more depth. Because as you can see, we had a tiny space to work with, but we managed to create that depth by creating layers in the lighting and in the production design. I've actually done a very similar music video before. This one was for June Jones, and we did pretty much the same thing that we did in this music video. So we had a lot of pipe cleaners in the foreground, flashing lights, its torches, prisms, and all of that tied together with, hey, red lighting. Again, is this a theme? Strangely enough, that was actually the same production designer as well. What a coincidence. But this music video and the June Jones music video kind of show that having a really strong vision as a director and conveying that accurately to your crew is a really important and valid thing to do. If that wasn't there, we wouldn't have been able to pull this off. We wouldn't have been able to come together and all be on the same page. Everything works hand in hand and another really important thing is to work with your production designer as a director of photography. That's a really important connection to have. But it really does all come down to open and good communication. But ultimately I am very very happy with this music video. I'm really happy with how it turned out because all of those challenges were overcome by clear communication. Now if you have any more questions about how we put this one together you can leave a comment down below. I'll try and get to it. I'll try and answer as many as I can. And like I said in my previous video I am going to start leaving links in the description to certain things that I find interesting, whether it be a news article or maybe a social justice issue or, or something like that, something you may not have heard of. So today's link is actually a news article that I read recently about some new research that's happening into cancer treatments using bees. If that doesn't catch your interest, I don't know what will. I'm going to leave a link down below. You can have a read about it. It's incredibly interesting and such a breakthrough. But thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed that video and I'll see you next time.